Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and welcome to a quick and dirty resource video. Today we are looking at something called Godot Shaders, which is predictably enough for Godot developers. And what this is, is basically a portal, a sharing site for doing Godot specific shaders. Now Godot shaders are a lot like GLSL shaders, so other shader resources, which we'll get to actually later in this video, are of use in Godot Engine, but there are some specific things to Godot. Godot has its own shader types, it's got its own slightly different shader language. This is pretty common in the world of game engines because there's different rendering backends. You could have to support GLSL, you could have to support HLSL for DirectX, or you could support Metal, whatever. There's multiple different uh, rendering backends, so there's multiple different, slightly different shadering technologies. So this site actually is a collection of shaders specifically ready to go in Godot 3. So we're going to take a quick look at some of the shaders that are here. So we see the feature shaders. Let's jump in and take a look at the all shaders category. Now, as of right now, there aren't a ton of shaders, but hopefully over time, this grows. You can also contribute your own shaders. You'll notice I am currently logged in and I can upload my own shader right here. There's also snippets. We'll get back to that in just a second. But otherwise, this is pretty straightforward. We have a number of different shaders. For each particular shader, you have um, a uh, screenshot generally up to three different screenshots of it. You have the shader itself and then you have instructions on go ahead and using it. And there you can see some of the results, including in some cases animations. So you can see what the shader is all about. So this is for getting that old school CRT kind of retro screen approach. Um, and you can also see they've broken down the shaders by their types. So we've got canvas types. Those are what we uh, call 2D shaders or pixel shaders in the world of Godot. Uh, spatial, which is your 3D shaders, and then particle effects, of which we do not have a ton of them. And the, everything here is either in the CC0 or the MIT open source license. So when you commit your own project up to the Godot shaders website, you uh, you pick one of these two licenses. Both these two licenses allow you to use your these shaders in your own public domain. Now do be aware though sometimes the shaders also come with some sample images those samples may not be in the public domain so do be careful for that it comes down to the individual author so we're gonna go ahead and take a look at a simple canvas item so this is a 2d style shader as for creating a flame effect like this you can see here you can come in you can vote for what you think of it as you can see all of this stuff is quite new uh, we got a bit of a breakdown of what the texture parameters are and how to go ahead and use this one and then of course we have the shader code and a couple of examples of it in action so i'm gonna go ahead we'll do a copy of that and then we'll head on over to Godot. So here we are. I'm in a 2D scene. So you can see here my root node is a 2D scene. I go ahead and create a color rect on top of that, like so. Let's stretch that out to take up the whole world like that. And in terms of shaders, shaders are applied as part of the material attribute. We'll go ahead and create a new shader material and we will double click that one. And we will go ahead, double click, enter, create shader. We'll go ahead and create a new shader. And we will go ahead and edit that guy right there. This will bring up our shader editor down here. You'll notice again, shader type is expected. This is uh, like so. Just paste that guy in there. So you see here, this is a shader type of canvas item. Canvas item is very specific to the world of Godot. Uh, that probably isn't what we actually want right now. That doesn't look that great because there's a couple more steps. The shader exposes a couple of parameters uh, out. So what we need to now do is select this guy Go to the material like so, and you're gonna see the shader has parameters available right here. What we need to do is hook up a noise and a gradient texture. So let's go ahead and create a new noise texture in this one. And uh, let's edit that guy. And in the noise, we'll create a new simplex noise. All right, so we're getting much more fiery or fiery or yeah, fiery, I guess is the word. Uh, so now we're gonna go ahead and create a new gradient texture. And we'll edit that guy. And once again, this is a new gradient and we could tweak it and play with it. And this is gonna control how the flames are uh, operated. But otherwise we have our texture up and going. You'll notice here, we've got uh, control over this one. So if we wanted to have blue flame, we could create a blue flame here. And let's get rid of the brown and make that like a there. So you've got control and, and various different parameters for all of these various different shaders. Pretty straightforward on the whole. The nice thing here is all of the shaders here are ready to go uh, for the Godot engine. On top of that, we've also got a section here for snippets. And these are little bits of uh, logic or things that you need to commonly do in shader development. So here, for example, we've got here is the shader code for uh, defining a border for creating a circle. And then sometimes there's an explanation of how it works. Some of these things are from the book of shaders. Spoiler alert, that's gonna come up in just a second. Uh, but these are all very specifically implemented in the Godot's language. Now, a lot of this can be adopted from other shaded languages. The cool thing here though, is if you are a Godot developer, all of this stuff is 
uh, ready to go. The other big thing about the site, obviously, is it's here as a community. So if you want to contribute, you've created your own shaders, and you think the Godot, unit, um, the Godot community could take advantage of them, just log in, register, and then um, you can come in here and do an upload. So you can upload a shader like so, and basically it's pretty straightforward, right? You come in here, give it a title, give it a description, uh, give it some code, flag what kind of shader it is, which backend renderer it is compatible with, add some tags, pick one of the two open source licenses you want to go with, and then upload it. You can also edit your shaders after the fact. You can add a cover image and up to three screenshots, up to one megabyte each. Another thing you'll notice is if I, I think I come back here, uh, you can also go ahead and submit articles. Uh, I'm not sure that this one is ready yet, but I think this will go into snippets or um, perhaps a new category in the future. Seems to be a bit of a placeholder at this point in time. But as it stands right now, adding your own shaders to the community is really quite simple. Send it up. And then for everything that you're seeing here, um, there is a discussion board below it. So you can see some of these things. So here, this one has uh, two comments below it. So we'll go ahead and take a look at the shader. And you're gonna notice down below, there is a bit of comments on there. So if you run into problems or you need some uh, questions answered, whatever there is, uh, feedback down below. So that is it. That is Godot Shaders. Uh, it's available, predictably enough, at GodotShaders.com. Uh, that's probably about as easy as it gets. Uh, as I mentioned earlier on, we're going to cover a couple of the resources. The big one, and you probably all know about this one right now, is the Book of Shaders. This is not specifically for uh, Godot. You're going to have to adapt. The, the languages are very, very similar, but this one walks through, through a number of different concepts of uh, basically developing shaders, how to get things to work, what parameters are, how shaders work, and then some specific shaders in general. Now, you're going to notice a lot of this, so we've got noise and such covered down here, but a lot of these things haven't been implemented yet. So this is very much a work in progress, but this, uh, the Book of Shaders is a very useful resource for people that want to um, go and, you know, learn the basics of shader development. And then next up, we have everybody's favorite shader toy. Now, this is kind of like Godot shaders, but like a thousand times bigger, but not specific to Godot. So you can see all kinds of shaders here. Uh, there's also, this has one of the features that I'd really like to see Godot shaders get is the ability to actually run the shader in the browser. That would be cool. So if you could implement uh, the ability to, to upload well along with your shader, a runnable version that runs on GodotShaders.com, that would be kind of cool. But Shader Toy has an absolute ton of shaders here. Actually, I wonder if they tell me the exact number that we're up to. All right, there we go. It's 48,346. Now you'll also notice that my computer is kind of having a seizure. This site is a pig. I don't know why they insist on loading 100 kajillion uh, shaders with their UI, but as you can see, uh, 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 why do I want to click warning? I really desperately want to know what warning does, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to press it. Uh, so if you want to learn more about shaders and you want, you know, start maybe adapting some shaders specifically for Godot, Shader Toy is an excellent place to start. Uh, but yep, that is uh, the site for today. It is Godot Shaders. Again, it's pretty early. There's only like 30, 35 plus shaders there, but it's all about community. So you've got a place where you can share your existing shaders and you can go and get them from other people. So the more people that know about it, the more people that use it, the more useful it gets. And thus, why I did this video. So go check out Godot Shaders. Of course, if you're not a Godot user, there's absolutely no value here at all, because uh, this is very specifically about adapting shaders to the Godot language and Godot engine and the way of going things forward. Uh, but if you are a Godot developer, if you guys participate, this will become a more useful resource and it'll grow in more and more importance. And I hope you found it useful. All right, that's it. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.